And? There we go. So what force is actually driving this whole thing to move? There's two weights there. The weight of the H hand Okay. So if this is 100 grams, and we're doing crude numbers here, uh, let's assume we'll just round G off just to make life simpler. I mean, if we're close, we're close, and if we're not close, it'll be noticeable. So we're plugging in F equals MA. The force said is just basically that weight right there, which is just. Uh, this is 100 grams, that's so 0.1 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. Don't do fancy math, that's one newton. And mass? W is equal to mg, m is equal to W divided by g. Four hundred. What mass am I putting here? The weight. Pardon? The weight. The mass of the weight. Which is? Is it one kilogram? No, uh, one kilogram mass. That's a one kilogram mass right there. Point one. That, that's where this point one came from. All right, so say mass is point one kilograms. So what should the acceleration be? 10 meters per second squared. Let's see if we get that. All right, so the way we're going to do it is I have a motion sensor set up here. Uh, when I attach the mass to it and let go, this cart is going to start moving. What I would expect to see on the display of position versus time is it's going to start running before I let go, so it should be flatlined, and then it should curve up like this. It's going to hit, and so there might be some garbage out here. But what we need to do is pick some, pick where we get a part of a parabola. We're going to do a curve fit to it, and curve fitting is something that it's going to do. And we're going to end up with it's going to give us y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. This is what the lab quest is going to do for us. And we're going to take that number right there and multiply times 2. That is the acceleration. So the acceleration is 2 times whatever that is. Because, and you've seen this, just not in this form, but when we had that the distance that an object fell was the 1 half at squared, that's one half little a, one half acceleration. So a is one half a. So little a is twice the a. All right. Uh, that hopefully is set up well enough. Okay. I was looking to make sure that this was registering and not shooting off to three meters. And I'm going to trust her eyes in just a moment. These pulleys 
are called super pulleys. The fact that there's not a whole lot of friction there, if it's done right, if I spin that, that should go for a bit. Unlike some of the other pulleys that we have. Most of you can see that. I'm assuming all of you have much, much better eyesight than I've got. What you should see is a red line that's basically curving up like a parabola, and then there's got the garbage at the top when I stopped it with my hand. All right, I want to take a part of the parabola. I'm just going to highlight part of it. And, ooh, I probably see the over here. That's doing 20 samples a second. Up. We'll see what we get. Probably 50 samples a second would have been better. I like that. Analyze and then curve fit position. Now, when you do this, I don't think you did curve fit in the lab last week. Curve fit when you the part that I highlighted. There's going to be a black brackets which are basically the both ends. That's what it's going to fit against. It's not going to fit against anything outside those brackets. Doing a quadratic fit. It plots a black line over top of it and it has A is 0.88445. Big A. Psst. 0.88445. And therefore, my acceleration is twice that. Our prediction was 10 meters per second squared, and we got under 2. Of course, my question is, why? And let's just, for the sake of this, just say that, let's assume that physics is not completely wrong. What did we ignore? Yes. Which are worse on the top of the graph. No, well, true, but we needed to ignore those. Is it the weight that's being pulled? Oh, so close. So close. Not the, the weight, weight of the thing that was pulled. The weight of the pulley? Of the oh, pulley we, is negligible. We don't need to worry about the pulley. Depends on which way you want to go next. The, um, the tension of the rope pulling up from the thing. Okay, we did ignore that because technically F equals MA, if I'm looking at that mass there, there are two forces acting on it. There is a tension here, which I didn't write down. But what is that tension doing? Pulling it. Slowing it down. The, the tension, no, it's not pulling that down. The tension is keeping it from falling. Slowing it down. So, uh, slowing. Okay. What else was tension doing? Moving it in that direction. Isn't it matching the force of the ground rotation or the weight? If it was matching the force of the weight, then it would have been in dynamic equilibrium and acceleration would have been zero. Okay, maybe I said it wrong, but. It's okay to say things wrong. I thought Hannah had it earlier. Is it the weight of the part? 
So close. Is it the tension connecting to the car? The weight of the the, the, the weight of the thing that's pulling it down, that mass, we took that into account already. The mass of the object. Thank you. Yes, not the weight, the mass. This driving force here is not only moving that, it's also moving the cart. Both things are moving. So if you bring tension into it, and in 151 and 251, we definitely go into that level of detail. This tension that's slowing this down is also the same tension that's pulling on this. So technically we would write two equations and the tensions would cancel out. But we need to take into account the fact that this is also being accelerated. Now, I did not bring a triple feed balance, but I have measured the mass of this enough. The mass of this is about 500 grams. So the total mass was not 0.1, but 0.6 kilograms. I have the 0.1 kilograms dangling and then I've got the half kilogram here. So now, what is my acceleration? What would be the predicted acceleration? No, because since now 1 is equal to 0.6a, not uh, 1 is equal to 0.1a. And we have 1.77. A whole lot closer. What would happen if we threw another 100 gram mass on the end here? So we had two hundred gram masses on the end. What's going to happen? The acceleration's going to change. Louder, please. The acceleration's going to change. Okay, how? It'll double. Oh, roughly. Yeah. Now it won't double. In a nice ideal world, it would not double exactly, but it would be close to that. What's going to change here if I add another 100 gram mass? Uh, at 100 gram mass, it would be 0.7. Yeah, that, this right here is the 0.5 for this, and then plus 0.1 plus 0.1. We'd already taken that into account. Can we? How did you get 1.67? Uh, so we have this math problem right there. So 1 is equal to 0.7 times A. Divide by 0.7. That cancels out. So whatever 1 divided by point, oh, it was 0.6 before. Oh. 1 divided by 0.6 is that. All right, so we have... 200 grams hanging on the end. So this is now 0.2 times 9.8, which is, oh, times 10. So now the total force is two newtons pulling 0.7 kilograms of mass. And so acceleration is 2 divided by 0.7, which is 2.8. 2 2 2 2 okay, let's find out how close we come.
is one of those few class demonstrations that actually come out with results that are decent. Stop swinging. If you'll notice, it flatlined in the beginning because it was holding still. I let go. The, oops. The flatlined at the middle, and then you get the very steep parabola because it's, well, frankly, I doubled the, we almost doubled the acceleration, so we're going to double how fast it's changing. And then when it bounced backwards, it, you get the curve going the other way, where it bounces back very quickly and then slows down, connecting with what we did earlier. Yeah, people on cameras just have to use their imaginations. All right, so that's what it's looking like. So we're going to highlight part of the parabola. Actually, I'm going to zoom in first. Just going to highlight more than I actually need. Zoom in so that I can find the parabola. Highlight what I want. Analyze, curve fit. Position. I got the black brackets there, which potentially, I guess, Amina is probably in the best position to see, but I don't know if you can see them. You can see them? <laughs> okay. There's one right there, and there's one right there. So that's the part that's actually going to, it's going to make sure that the curve fit fits best for what's between those two brackets. I want a quadratic fit. In between the two brackets, it should fit very nicely. Outside the brackets, it may or may not. But they're down here, it doesn't fit well at all, but I don't care about that part. And over there, it doesn't fit well, but I don't care about that part either. My value of A, 1.2908. That's my big A. 1.2908. So my acceleration is twice that, 2.58. Not as good as we had before, but that's just one trial. And so in a lab, you would do it several times to come out with sort of an average value. But hopefully, this is enough to say that some of the stuff I'm talking about at least has some credibility. Questions to hear? All right, changing tact. So chapter four, I wanna talk about chapter five. We've actually been doing chapter five for however long we've been at school. I guess this is week three. When we do force diagrams and we had forces acting, the forces with the same label acting on different objects in different directions, you know, no, for ground's pushing up on me, I'm pushing down on the ground. That's Newton's third law. I push down. On the floor. With 1,000 Newtons of normal force. Uh, instead of I'm going to change it to the man. Which is down on the floor with a thousand newtons of normal force. Just a simple statement, person's pushing down on the ground with normal force. If I did the force diagram, man, ground, I have this normal force acting down on the ground. What's the other part of the pair? The other 
So the way that you would actually sort of formalize that is all forces require two objects. What are the two objects involved in this problem? Okay. So let's highlight those or at least underline them. Your and the man. Forces require a magnitude and direction. So what's the magnitude? 1,000 newtons. And the direction? Uh, down. All right. And I have the type of force here. If I had applied Newton's third law to this, well, just as we have in the drawing there, basically I flip the object. So instead of the man and the floor, I change it to the floor and the man. So the floor pushes. I change the direction up on the man with 1,000 newtons of normal force. I think there's a master step problem. There, there are a whole in a bunch of tests where I do something like this. Applying the Newton's third law, I just switch the direction and the objects. And if this is true, this has to be true. The magnitude and the norm and the type of force stays the same. Um, the man, the the second little man down there. Um, does it have the air pointing up? Yes. Okay. There's a normal because the ground is pushing up on him with a normal force. Okay. I left the weight off because this problem was not involving weight. So when we were doing the third line. Say it again. Yes. Newton's third law says that if this is true, this has to be true. Most of you know Newton's third law with said differently. 